Hello there, my name is William Andry, and I'd like to welcome you to ShopFix, a community joined together for the love of woodworking. In today's episode, I want to show you how you can build this simple 2x4 picture frame. I hope you enjoy. First, you'll want to rough cut the length of each frame piece, being mindful to leave plenty of extra length and cut out any large knots in the wood. Next, it's important to square the edge of each of the 2x4 boards. I usually take 3 passes at 1 32nd. Now with one edge square, I can trim off the rounded corners of these 2x4 pieces that will make up my frame. I measure for final width, flip the boards, and trim off any excess rounding that's present on the other side of the boards. Now it's time to face joint one side square so we can flatten the other side with the planer. When milling 2x4s to build picture frames such as this one, I like to retain as much of the lumber as possible, so take light passes until you have a smooth flat board. Let's continue by cutting this rabbit out to inlay our picture and backer board inside the frame. To achieve this rabbit cut, we can simply cut two curves that meet together if no dado stack is available for use. For smaller rabbit cuts of less depth, you could also simply take multiple passes with just the curve of the blade. Let's finish this rabbit cut by making our final rip on the table saw. When creating your rabbit, be mindful of everything you plan to inlay, such as glass, plexiglass, matting, the print, and backer board, as to create a large enough opening. Before we can glue this frame together, we'll need to cut precise 45 degree miters in each frame piece. To get the most accurate measurements, be sure to check the fit of your miters, plan your cuts, and use a 45 degree stop block to ensure the lengths are equal. Here's some quick tips on ensuring great miter cuts. First, make sure your blade is properly aligned to 45 degrees. Secondly, measure twice. And lastly, when you do cut, cut slow and steady. After cutting our last 45 degree miter, it's time to test fit the frame and prep for the glue up. To glue this picture frame together, I will use a Bessie band clamp, which I have found to be simple and effective. I recommend applying glue to the corners of the shortest boards. If you apply a generous amount, there should be no need to apply glue to the adjoining corners. It's important to note that you'll want to apply glue to both your pieces before assembling the frame together, because once joined, the glue will begin to take hold. You'll want as much time as possible to align all the corners flush with one another. Once the frame is aligned, you can tighten the band clamp down, making sure not to over tighten which could cause the frame or band to pop out of place. After allowing an ample amount of time for drying, you can unclamp your frame and begin sanding to a smooth finish. I started sanding with 100 grit sandpaper to even out the corners. Next, I applied wood putty in some areas to create an unblemished surface. I use my own homemade putty on darker colored woods, however when you mix wood glue and pine sawdust, it dries much darker than the wood, so I recommend using a product that specifically matches the pine color. Afterwards, you can simply sand the frame with 150 grit sandpaper and then 220 grit sandpaper to create a smooth finish. I decided to apply boiled linseed oil to finish this pine frame which will create a nice contrast to the piece that I plan on mounting in the frame. After letting the boiled linseed oil dry, I applied a top coat of high gloss polyurethane. Surprisingly, linseed oil already leaves a fairly gloss finish, so it's certainly not necessary as I've come to find out. Rather than cutting the frame corners to glue in splines or drilling holes to glue in dowel rods, we will reinforce these joints with simple metal joiners which nail easily into the wood. We will mount these metal joiners to each of the four corners. To 
To hang this frame onto the wall, we will use picture frame wire and D-rings. You will want to mount the D-rings approximately a third of the way down from the top of the frame. Picture frame wire enables the frame to be leveled with ease and there's no way to misalign it on my end. I first drilled shallow pilot holes for the screws and then gently mounted the D-rings in place. Once the D-rings are mounted, you can take your picture frame wire, thread it through the ring, and twist the wire onto itself several times. Finish securing the wire by looping it together. With one side secured, you can measure for final length and trim the wire making sure to leave plenty of wire to wrap and loop around the D-ring. Let's create the backer board now. I use 8th inch handy board panel, which worked out great since I'm working with a large frame. For smaller frames, you can simply use a cardboard material. It's time now to insert our picture or painting and glass or plexiglass if applicable. Then we can close it all up by sliding our backer board on and secure it in place. I have attempted to secure the backer board on with glazier points and have found that they are not worth the trouble and said I like using finishing nails. When using finishing nails to secure the contents of a picture frame, simply use an alignment punch to tap the nail into the side of the frame. Once firmly in place, you can force the head of the nail down onto the backer board as you tap it into place. With the backer board firmly secured with finishing nails, it's time for the finishing touches, such as burning in your Maker logo. This was the first project I've had the chance to use my new wood burner on, and after a few practice runs, it was time to burn my logo into the frame. Well, with my logo burned in the frame, the final touches were done, and it was time to deliver this one to my dad's house. The frame encased his cricket scoreboard used when playing darts. I hope that you really enjoyed this shop fix video. If you have any questions about my 2x4 picture frame making process, write me a comment below. If you share a passion for woodworking, don't forget to subscribe to the shop fix channel.